All right, Danny, thank you. Well, going in depth on International Women's Day, we decided to take a few minutes to talk with a leader who has become an integral part of Utah's political, economic, and cultural conversations. Aaron Mendenhall has served as mayor of Utah's capital city for just over one year. But what a year to step into that role, along with the health crisis impacting all of us. Salt Lake City was hit particularly hard as the center of northern Utah's commercial office space. Their entertainment venues, the airport, hotels, and hundreds of small businesses catering to everyone who goes into the city. And then there were protests over police and race relations, even a windstorm that uprooted some magnificent old trees surrounding City Hall and in some of our amazing parks in Utah's capital city. So, Mayor Mendenhall, I hope I didn't just give you a whole lot of heartburn there. <laughs> um, I appreciate you being on the show. Uh, and uh, being mayor is a, is a big job any year. This, this year and two months you've had, I, I, how does it all hit you right now? Well, I can't help but think of when I was running for mayor. I was on the city council for six years and talked about how important that knowledge of the way city works, knowing the departments, knowing the individuals, towing those loads and being able to hit the ground running. I never thought that all of the challenges and opportunities, frankly, that are created by these openings in the way we work would come down to being able to move quickly and dynamically. But Salt Lake City Corporation has an incredible 3,000 plus people who keep those wheels on the bus rolling. And uh, I think last year was our best opportunity maybe in the city's history to prove just how dedicated our public servants are. Uh, well, and, and I wonder, you know, we're talking about um, International Women's Day, and I wonder how you think that being a woman impacts your experience, your effectiveness in leadership. What, what, what would you say? Women are more than half, slightly more than half of the population. And in Utah, we're a little less than a quarter of the elected seats here. There's no way for me as a woman to say how um, my experience being a woman equally you know, uh, can be measured against your experience of being a man um, or being uh, for those individuals who aren't cisgender. It is intrinsically baked into who I am, how I engage with the world, how the culture views me, what kind of roles and expectations and stereotypes might come along at any point from being a young girl to being a senior citizen. There are uh, too many ways for us to count, but I, we know that they exist, they're important, and having the voices and experiences of women, half of the population, we should be at least, I think, half of the representation in the conversations that determine our day-to-day -day lives as citizens. Well, amen to that, and I, I wonder, when, when you step into these leadership roles, because I, I remember I, I first started calling you reporting on air quality issues, and you you were an activist, um, yeah. and, and then, um, you know, in taking on these different roles, you mentioned in your time on the city council. Has there been a challenge in that confidence, uh, you know, to, to, to take all of this on and get to this place? Uh, how, how has that happened for you? You know, it's happened step by step by step. And I sometimes get asked, did you know you wanted to be a mayor when you were a young girl? And I honestly can't say that I had the confidence then as a young girl, um, lost my father to cancer at a young age, raised by a single mother, that I could see myself in those roles decades down the road. And I think there's a lot of young girls in the world and certainly even in our city and our valley who um, can't quite see what the world's gonna be like for them down the road. But I do know that the opportunities today for young girls and women across the board are expanding and they're better in most regards than they were 20, 30, 40 years ago and certainly before that. Utah still ranks at the bottom of the barrel year after year for opportunities and the status of women, really that ability for women to access the opportunities that they deserve. So we have a long ways to go in the state of Utah, but it's work that I'm passionate about and the city's engaged in every day. Well, let me ask you about um, w w one of the things that's going on nationally and that will affect us in Utah and affect Salt Lake City. Uh, our, our Washington delegation uh, in is talk when they talk about this coronavirus stimulus, um, they uh, they don't like it, and especially they talk about uh, aid to state and local government, saying it's unnecessary. Hey, look at Utah's budget surplus. I wonder when you hear that, how do you see that argument, and what do you think is needed? Well. 
clearly I'm biased toward the city end of that, that federal to local spectrum because this is where the rubber meets the road, literally and figuratively. The roads, literally, the, most of them are run by cities. The sidewalks, the street lights, your garbage getting picked up, the water you turn on when you flush the toilet. All of these aspects of our day-to-day -day life are really run primarily by your local taxpayer dollars and decisions made at your city hall and with your city council. We also know in Salt Lake City, 90% of the businesses licenses in Salt Lake City are small businesses. That means 50 or fewer employees. So it's not only the, the character and sort of the soul of the economy and the neighborhoods of Salt Lake City, but it's who our neighbors are. We're, the, we're these business owners, these nonprofits, and we're the people going to work behind that counter day after day, really as frontline workers. We had a flat budget, which we were lucky to have overall last year as the capital city. And I know other cities across the state have seen furloughs and layoffs and programs that are critical to their residents have to stop. So there's not enough, even in the capital city, for us to do all the service and needs that are hitting our residents every single day. That those federal dollars go an incredibly long way, and I think they are best managed right here at the local level. You know, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us about those things and give that that perspective. And also, you know, one of the things that's nice that's nice to hear, if I can say, is uh, when you talk about stepping into leadership. Uh, from that kind of organic place where you get involved because you care about something else, uh, it's it's not about ambition for for a position, and that's that's a that's a nice uh, refreshing thing, I think. Thanks, Math. Yeah, Max. It's a labor of love. Mm -hmm. Uh, definitely, you couldn't do it if you didn't love the work itself. And I just I love our people. We have incredible people here in Salt Lake City. And well, they inspire me. If you can actually say that uh, after this year, <laughs> then, then something's job. good. Uh, thank yeah. you, so, uh, Mayor Mendenhall. Thanks so much. I appreciate you thank taking you, some time with us.